Okay. So in this, the first thing that we need to talk about is what is our motion, right? Now, when we talk about motion, what is motion? When you move from a particular point A to another point B, that is what is said to be motion. So an object when it is moving relative to some reference point. Hi, Abhinav. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, so when we talk about motion, so what exactly is motion? Motion is going to be when an object starts from a particular point, ends up at some other point, and with respect to some reference point, obviously, right? With respect to some reference point, when there is a change in position of an object, that is what it is said to be in motion, right? Is that clear? I hope it makes sense. Yes. Right. Excellent. When you have that, as a result, the first thing that we need to talk about in motion is distance and then we have displacement displacement okay. now what exactly do these stand for let's see supposing you have an object which is at point a and it is trying to reach another point b okay so if it starts from a point a and it wants to reach the point b then how exactly will it happen? Will it go? So in this case, we'll say that there are multiple paths the object can take. So it can start and go like this. It can take a path which goes like this, or it can even take a straight line path. Right? This can even take a straight line path in going like this. Right? Am I clear? Does that make sense? Okay. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. So, as I was trying to say, the object goes like this and it ends up at this. Now, when we talk about when we talk about distance, so how do we talk about distance? What exactly is distance? So distance, if we say so that will be equals to the length of the path covered, correct? So distance, when we say it is going to be equal to the length of the path covered, right? Now, it is obviously going to depend upon the path. So this is path dependent, correct? For example, if you go from your home to your school, if you walk down from your home, assuming that you walk down from your home to school, there can be multiple different paths, right? But what is your main aim? You want to go from your home to school and come back, right? So how much is the path that you cover? It is going to depend upon which is the path that you take. Right? There is not going to be one path that you're going to take. There can be multiple paths, right? So as a result, this is going to be the distance that you say is going to be path dependent. Do you have it? Does that make sense? Is that fine? Yes. Okay. Now, if it is path dependent, then since it does not depend upon the direction, we say it's a scalar quantity. I hope you are clear about what is the vector, what is the scalar? All yes, of you, sir. I hope you are clear. Yeah. Yes, sir. So what is the scalar quantity? And what is how is it actually it is different from a vector? Any idea? Scalar is the scalar one which is, is having only magnitude. magnitude. Uh -huh. And vector is uh, vector is having both scale uh, magnitude and direction. Perfect. Does everybody agree with that? Uh, yes, sir. Excellent. Yes, sir. Excellent. Now, if we go ahead further, so this is actually a scalar quantity. Now, I'm going to introduce something. Length. Length is going to be means irrespective of whichever system of units that you take, whether you take a CGS unit, that you take SI unit, or whatever unit that you take. Is ultimately going to be distance is ultimately going to be equal to the length of the path, correct? So, what will we say? We'll represent the length by L. So, L is this dimension. So, it is dimensionally we are going to represent it by capital L, right? Is that clear? Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Why am I saying this? Because in physics, you can only add or subtract quantities which have the same dimension. You cannot add or subtract quantities which don't have the same dimensions. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So this is when we talk about the distance. 